Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Physique Development Podcast. Today is going to be part two of a two-part series going over traveling and how to stay on top of your training and your nutrition. So part one was going all over training. If you haven't listened to that, then you might want to go ahead and listen to that one first. But today we're going to be going over everything nutrition when you are traveling, and not just for the holidays, but when it comes to travel on a day-to-day basis. But before we get into things, we'll go ahead and talk about our weekend. Some very exciting news. We got to watch the Packers get a W. The crowd <laughs> after, goes wild. Uh, <laughs> after five weeks of turmoil and heartbreak and anxiety going into sadness because of loss, um, we have now seen a win, and it felt so good. It was a, a win. It, I forgot how good it felt to win, mm-hmm. how much it impacted me as, as a fan, um, how my mood changed on Monday. I went in so much more chipper. I went in with so much more happiness into my work week because the Packers won. And I think that that's a problem, honestly. Mm-hmm. I think that that's not good that it's affecting me on an emotional level. I think that's the epitome of being a fan. A diehard fan. It's honestly a big reason that I became a little bit less of a fan for Kentucky for a little bit of time because I felt like so much of my emotions was going into it. And it was just we like- were exposing ourselves. It was a lot. Yeah. And so after college, I- was still a UK fan, but not as diehard for a few years just because I was like, I got other things my emotions got to be doing than focusing on this game right now. Yeah. And and I being a Aaron Rodgers lifetime fan, you know, childhood, uh, Alex loves Aaron Rodgers to I mean, my core. Aaron Rodgers is my best friend. Yeah. And so I, I take personal offense to how poorly everyone's been ragging on him over these past couple of weeks. And so it was good to see him throw a couple of touchdowns uh, this week and, and play pretty well. Score some points on offense. That felt good <laughs> to see some points scored, to see balls. Some balls were still dropped, but to see balls in people's hands. That's what I even was saying of it all of last year. It just felt like, okay, if it touches the person's hands, they're going to catch it. And then all of this year, it's like, Okay, it can land in someone's hands, and you very well could not proceed in that play. That is the end. Yeah, and this on this weekend as well, um, I had my first full day off in weeks, Mm -hmm. if not over a month type situation. Um, October, November, really this whole year has been a massive grind for us in its entirety. Um, It's a year that I have a lot of happiness from and a lot of things of, of accomplishment that I'm proud of. But when we sign off uh, December 31st and say, you know, hello to the new year, I'll be excited that we've sealed this one and put this one behind us as we go into the new year with a lot of positivity. But um, I'll be very proud, I'll be proud of everything that this year brought, which I've competed this year. I know. That was this year. That was wild. That seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah, absolutely wild. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to, I feel like the sprint is, we're, the sprint has turned into a crawl and sometimes <laughs> a drag from one or the other, you know, pulling the other. But um, yeah, I, I had my first full day off on Sunday, and which you was- decided to spend it cleaning. <laughs> I did. Um, I think that it was, it was nice to spend the front end of the day from the time I woke up to about one or two o'clock um, cleaning as a, and like doing laundry, cleaning the closets and those different things um, was amazing. Mm-hmm. It was, ex- uh, you know, tiring for sure, but it made me feel so much better going into Monday. Yeah. And I think that's like, we've talked about it before of, I, I don't, hate doing laundry. It's actually kind of relaxing to me if I have the time to do it. If everything is stacked full and it's like, oh my gosh, laundry, then that's when I dread it the absolute most. But if I can stay consistent with it and have a day, like I enjoy the days. And I even told you because I was working on uh, Saturday when you were cleaning of um, saying like, oh, I was kind of jealous because I was like, oh, it'd be kind of peaceful just to be listening to music and doing laundry. And then it's like, oh, it's not that you hate it. It's just you hate it when your schedule is so full. So yeah, like when you try to cram it or it like falls at the end of your day, Mm -hmm. like you're meal prepping after your long work day or you're doing laundry after a long work day, like no, no one's going to enjoy that. Like anything that you're pushing off to the last second, you're not going to enjoy. But if you're able to prioritize it and it fits into your schedule better, I think anybody's going to get a little bit more enjoyment out of it as a whole. But it was awesome because Alex was a rock star and cleaned up so much, (laughs) and it was incredible. I was able to get a lot accomplished as well, and I felt great about that. And then we got to go and we got to train together on 
No, not on, on Saturday. Sun- on Sunday. Saturday, on Sunday. we worked almost the whole day. Okay. Yeah, 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 we did. On Sunday, we got to train together, which was nice. And then the Packers win, which was nice as yeah. well. Ended on a high note. So Yes. Very good. Yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and get into travel and training. Um, And like I said, this isn't just about the holidays. We are talking about what it looks like when it comes to you traveling, whether it's for work or you travel consistently to see family or whatever it may be. So the biggest thing I really want to vocalize when it comes to nutrition and traveling is it's all about preparation. Now, the amount of preparation is largely going to depend on your goals or what you have going on. If you're a competitor, you're going to have to prepare a lot and you're going to have to bring a lot. If you are someone who doesn't travel a ton and you are going on vacation, you might not have to do as many of these things. Or if you're going on a holiday, you might not have to do as many of these things or if you don't travel as frequently. But for us, we found, especially starting in 2020, we traveled a ton. And it used to be in my life that I wasn't a huge traveler. And so just one or two weekends off, it was like, okay, I don't have to have everything nailed down. But when we started to travel like almost every weekend and we went- I don't know if we- (laughs) Well, we a went lot, like a lot more. We went like eight weeks without being like home in our house for more than like six days. Yeah. And so it was just you can't use the excuse of, oh, it's just like a weekend off. Like it's not that big of a deal. I'll be back in routine. And so we really had to nail down what our routine was when it came to travel and making sure that we had everything set. Yeah. I, I mean, before you and I uh, started traveling together, I was very much so of the mindset I'll, as I'll figure it out when I get there. Even when I was um, competing and being even more diligent with my food, I was like, I'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just not the best tactic, especially with uh, one thing that I drive home with my clients is that digestion is the thing that matters the most. And if you go with the approach of, I'm just going to figure it out, there's no way that you prioritize digestion, unless you're, you know, going to the grocery right when you get there and spending time, you know, preparing meals beforehand. It's like, well, you should have just done that before you left. Like you're just taking time away from your travel by not doing it that way. Um, so I was very much so like that, but would be very um, disappointed in how things went uh, because of the lack of of consistency uh, and like distance between things from a meal to meal standpoint that I kept finding myself in because of that approach and not being prepared. And so, um, you have brought that preparation into my life tenfold. Um, and the having just at least like one or two, maybe three meals, like if you're eating more than three meals in a day, um, just ready for you to eat is such a peace of mind thing when you're traveling. Cause it's just like your hunger dictates so much of your mood, me especially. (laughs) Um, Can confirm. (laughs) And so with that being the case, like if you're traveling to be with family or you're traveling for vacation or whatever, like uh, something that's in your control that you know affects your mood, why would you put yourself behind the eight ball on purpose? Mm -hmm. And the question I always like to ask is, how do I want to feel when I travel? So when you hear about some of the things you do, you might think that seems tedious or that seems overwhelming. And that's completely okay if you feel that way. But at the end of the day, I'm always asking myself, how do I want to feel? And just like Alex said, not only is hunger going to affect us, but I know for one, digestion is large going to affect me. If my digestion is off, I'm not feeling good. I'm not feeling comfortable. I might still have issues when it comes to my sleep because of my digestion or vice versa. So the main things I always try to prioritize are going to be my digestion, my sleep, and then being able to look at the full encompassing of how I feel and what other aspects are at play there that I need to really nail down. Yeah, I think that you know, prioritizing those factors as well as prioritizing the mental health aspect that kind of comes around with that of um, the mood being shifted off and then maybe you're lacking confidence in how your clothes are fitting mm-hmm. or you're having, uh, your stomach is having distension. Um, all those things affect how your clothes fit and, and all your mentality. And so I think that that's a, a really big thing as well. Yeah, and who wants to go on vacation or go and travel and feel awful the whole time for things that you could have controlled? And I think that's where it was kind of the breaking point for me as I had traveled and realized like I can control some of these variables and I can make sure that I feel better in these instances. And so being able to look at it and think, all right, when I am 
putting everything together when I am planning this all out. What are the factors that help my digestion? What are the factors that help my sleep? Because when you are traveling, so many variables are off. You're sleeping in a different place. You might be in a different time zone. You're likely on a different schedule. If you're staying at a hotel or even with in-laws, you're likely going to have less privacy than you normally have, whether that's just coming to your bathroom routine or just in general. So there's a lot of factors that are up in the air. And so I always think about what factors can can I bring to baseline and control so that I can feel my absolute best when the other variables are kind of running on the side? I think that for the listeners, the like we're not saying to pack all of your meals and only eat out of Tupperware the whole time that you're traveling. Mm -hmm. Like that's not what we're encouraging. If that's what your goals call for, then that's what it is. Like if you're in prep and you're traveling, like that's what's going to need to happen more than more often than not. But in our uh, scenario, how do we approach it um, of like the meals that we have prepared and then the meals that we eat out, for example? Uh, well, we first look at, okay, are we going to a hotel? Are we going to s someone's house? Or are we going to an Airbnb? Because that's also going to depend on how I pack everything together. Because if we're going to a hotel, I am a little bit extra and I will bring a cooktop and I have no shame in my cooktop game. Uh, but it will look at, of okay, are we going out to eat a ton? Is this just for work? How long are we at that place? Because if we're just in and out in a weekend, then I'm likely going to pack a majority of our food because first, it's likely already prepared because it's prepared the week before, but also taking a look at if we are kind of in a bind with a schedule or maybe we don't have a rental car, I'm not going to want to have to leave the hotel or Airbnb or wherever I'm at and try and fend for food because not only is that going to put me in a place where I may be hangry, but it's also going to put me in a place where I might make a less than advantageous decision. Not to say it's a wrong decision to go out to eat, but I might be making a decision based on that hunger and that hanger in that moment instead of just recognizing I could have had some preparation. So we normally try to have, like Alex said, two or three meals within a day that we can have and we know we can just cut open the vacuum seal, dump it in a bowl and microwave it and be set to go. And also going out to eat the whole time that you're traveling is expensive. Very expensive. Like, especially if you're having to get an Uber and then go to eat and then come back, you know, with an Uber, your Uber's 20 bucks. The meal, if you're, you know, with a significant other or a friend, you're looking at 50 bucks. And then you have another, like you're spending close to a hundred dollars just every meal. And the time that that And pays. then the time allotments and, and waiting for the Ubers and all those different things. And like, um, I can assure you that when you're traveling, or I would assume when you're traveling, that you're not trying to see the inside of an Uber uh, for a <laughs> large percentage of your time in a new city or a new town or whatever. And so uh, trying to maximize the valuable time that you have, this, this saves money by having some of these meals prepared, saves you time, and also allows for you to be in a better headspace and mental, like mental mentality, uh, body image, all those different factors. And so the, the pros to being more prepared only make sense. Mm -hmm. Like the, the pros outweigh the cons so much because it's really the only con is that, um, you're having to spend time before you leave to get it all prepared. Um, and watching all the physique development videos on how to keep <laughs> all of your foods prepared and getting through TSA comfortably and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so the, the pros far outweigh the cons. And I think that always, you know, thinking of it in that sense, it's a, a no brainer. Hey guys, if you're listening to this episode and you're thinking, I travel all of the time and I need to be able to have reliable things to go to and I don't have the availability to pack my meals all the time, don't worry, we have something for you. It is gonna be the fast food ebook. So this has the chain fast food restaurants and it has listed which fast food restaurants it has in there. And it talks about how to hit your macros while eating out different requests that you can make so that you're able to hit your goals. So go ahead and grab one of these if you are considering traveler, or it's just something that you need to be able to make sure that you make good decisions when eating at fast food restaurants. Yeah. And I bring up time just because we are often working when we travel. And if we have to be, okay, we have to wake up and maybe our sleep wasn't the best due to travel or the bed that we're sleeping on. And then we have to figure out where we're going to eat nearby. We have to get there. All of that time when it would have been so much easier just to stay in the hotel room, get the work done, eat a meal, and then have more flexibility the rest of the day. So we've talked about it before of when it comes to work and travel, of we'll wake up early to get a lot of work done so 
that we are able to maximize the time either in a new city or with friends and family. Um, but that also comes from looking at how do I maximize that time in the morning? And if I'm having to go out for breakfast or having to call an Uber, like Uber Eats for breakfast, that's going to take a larger portion of my time. And that is going to kind of shoot me in the foot later in the day when I wanted to have that time to relax and be present. But I kind of used up all of my extra time trying to figure out a food option. Hot take. Uber Eats sucks. Uber Eats does suck. Dude, you're you're getting often you're ordering a great meal mm -hmm. that you know at that restaurant is good. You're getting it at like 30% heat. So mm -hmm. it's it's if, ice if. cold. That's ice a cold. Maybe 30%. If you got fries, they're soggy. And cold. If you got a bun, it's soggy. What's the point? And do they ever get your order right? Bro, get in your car and go get the stupid food. Like we Every single time that we have had food delivered outside of pizza, and even with pizza, we've been Sometimes disappointed. Sometimes that sucks too. For sure. But outside of pizza, like we really don't do any type of food delivery because we've had it's nothing but poor it, it, Yeah, it's, it's not good. Yeah. And then it's like the food that you're ordering is normally cheaper food overall. Right. Like it's not like well, I'm ordering. Well, because your delivery fee is already $20. So if you order like, you know, a $50 meal, now you're looking at 70 bucks. Yeah. I mean, come on now. And so like, I'm normally not going to order on Uber Eats. I don't even know if Uber Eats has like nicer, nicer restaurants on there. I don't know. We're, but we're I, Uber Eats haters. So yeah, we don't know a whole haters, lot. So I don't know a lot. Um, but like, even we got like, Wendy's one time when we were in Vegas and it was like like it was close yeah. by and they got our order wrong and everything was cold chicken and it was nuggets just, soggy it was just it was a mess and it was so expensive for such subpar experience so exactly we are haters of Uber Eats <laughs> <laughs> don't sponsor us Uber Eats <laughs> Uber you can sponsor us but yeah. not Uber Eats <laughs> um, so where does <laughs> we'll that go take ahead us and to get back on where track that, here where does that take us um, but when we talk about packing food you might be like like, okay, how do I even know what I'm allowed to pack with going through an airport? And I get commonly people asking me, oh, can I take this? Can I take this? And the answer is likely yes. You can take almost anything food-wise through TSA unless it's a liquid, and then you need to be aware of the amount. And so they do have a three-ounce limit. And so as long as you get containers that are like TSA approved, then you know that you can put whatever you need to in there, and they're going to go ahead and pass through. Uh, so with that, we normally bring a lunch box, like an insulated lunch box. We use a brand called Fitmark, which I don't believe is in yeah. a service any longer. They but know. we have multiple other bags and have had them for years, and they're still in great shape. Um, but I believe there's other brands, like six-pack brands, and I'm sure there's other ones as well, um, that are going to be great to be able to travel with. And with those ice packs, I would recommend looking into getting three-ounce ice packs just because you can have bigger ice packs going through if they're completely frozen. But you never know, like, on your way back if they're they're still going to be frozen. And so I always like to go with three ounce ice packs if possible, just because I know that they're not going to be compensated. Because if your ice packs are melting as they're going through TSA, then they will compensate those. Um, so that's another pro tip is if you have something that is more of a liquid, you can freeze it. So I have frozen smoothies before and gone through TSA and I'll eat it and it'll be all good to go after I get through TSA, but it's still frozen when I'm going through. We'll freeze meals and kind of use those as ice packs, which is really helpful. Now, one little asterisk I will make is that yogurt and peanut butter are both considered liquids. So I know that those might not be at the top of your list when you're thinking liquids, but they are liquids. And so that's going to be something that you're likely not going to be able to bring yogurt through. And then for peanut butter, um, I would say that you can bring it through uh, if you have it in a three ounce container or being able to have like Jif has the like little containers you can take, like the to-go ones, like RX bars and like Justin's almond butter have the squeeze packets. So those can be really great options for you as well. Uh, we normally throw our homemade peanut butter, which if you haven't seen how to make peanut butter, then we'll link that below. Um, but we'll normally bring that and we'll just throw that into a checked bag so that we're able to have that because that's the best peanut butter ever. <laughs> I was going to ask you, what are some of the off the wall things that people would not expect to not be able to go through? but they 
do go through if you freeze them or whatever? Because I feel like uh, while you think of it, um, while we were at the airport most recently, a guy had like tuna cans Mm -hmm. and those didn't make it through Mm -hmm. because there's obviously liquid in the tuna. Um, But he was he was very upset. He was very upset. He was I the only reason I thought of it was because of how upset I wouldn't have remembered it if he wasn't so upset. Um, Is there anything outside of the peanut butter? Did you say olive oil? A yogurt. Oh, yogurt. Um, anything else that people would not think about? Um, oils are also considered a liquid. And so I honestly just got like little squeeze bottles that are three ounces to go ahead and throw the olive oil in there. Now, coconut oil is a little bit of a tricky one just because it's a solid and then it's also a liquid depending on how hot it gets. So Trader Joe's does have like a coconut oil packets that are individual and those are going to be under those three ounces. So even if they melt, first they're like sealed so they're not going to leak. But even if they do melt, they're still going to be under that threshold. So you're going to be all set to go. But the main ones I always talk about are going to be peanut butter and yogurt. And I guess I'll go ahead and throw oatmeal in there. If you did like pre-make oatmeal or have like overnight oats, those can be on the edge. It kind of depends a little bit on the consistency, but also the TSA agent that you get that day. And the coconut oil, if you open that bag or you open that uh, container, put it in another Ziploc baggie because those things leak leak so bad. It has stained a lot of, not a, a, well, we only have a couple of those Fitmark bags, Mm -hmm. but the inside of those Fitmark bags are stained from those coconut oil packs. Yes. So I would say anything that you are taking, being able to double bag things, whether you're using a reusable bag like Stasher is a great brand, or you are just using normal Ziploc bags and double bagging. So like I said, if the peanut butter, putting in a checked bag, I'm not just putting a closed peanut butter container in the checked bag. I'm putting it also in another bag just in case something explodes. And we all know that they treat the checked luggage literally like they are just throwing things all trash. around. Yeah. So you never know how those bags are going to get treated of either glass breaking, if it is in a glass container, or just being able to have the leaking, something get hit wrong um, and being exploding. So we normally travel with some of the condiments in our checked bags too, just because you can get smaller condiments, of course. But when we travel, we're normally going through it because we're, we're eating the food that we brought with us. So like our Tabasco or like honey mustard, we'll throw that in a Ziploc or a stash bag and throw that in our checked bag um, and be set to go from there. But I think I covered the ones that are a little bit wonky, but really being able to realize you can take almost anything through food-wise with TSA. And so we pack that thing to the brim when it comes to food sometimes of just having all of the frozen meals in there or having bulk um, proteins in there or having our meals unfrozen and ready to go so that we can eat them once we get there. Yeah, and don't be late for your flight with a bunch of food because you're going to get stopped at TSA and they're going to have to, They un, well, it depends on who it is. Sometimes they're like, oh, it's just food and they just zip it back up and hand it back to us. But then if they have a newbie, which I feel like this year and last year, there's Lots a lot of, of new TSA people. They're like, all right, this is a teaching moment. And then we sit mm-hmm. there for 30 minutes and they they scan every thing that was in the bag. And so that's very annoying. But uh, yeah, don't be late for your flight. So you might very well get pulled by TSA and we've gotten pulled a number of times, but we never get things confiscated and we just are able to move on. So like Alex said, it's going to depend on the amount of time they hold you for, but always being prepared within that. And then when it comes to supplements, I did want to talk about these as well. I know you might think throwing white powder in a bag that someone is going to stop you, but they are not going to. If you throw it in a bag, you can put a label on it, but they do test it sometimes. Again, they pull out their little testing kit, put some on it, and you're all clear because it's just protein powder. At one point, I think a pre-workout or an electrolyte got flagged for possibly being an explosive, um, but we got cleared and it was all good to go from there. So with supplements, pills, and powders, you're all good to pack those. Um, I personally label them just so I don't get confused, uh, not necessarily 14. TSA. But with those, again, making sure that you double bag. Um, and I wouldn't take the containers. I would empty them into the bags just for the ease of travel. Um, and luckily, Legion has come out with new eco-friendly protein bags. And so you could honestly just like 
push the air out of that, throw that in another bag because I'm always double bagging everything with travel um, and being able to go from there instead of having to empty everything over from the tubs or the containers. So um, that's going to be, and even pill supplements, you can throw those in a bag. We also have a like massive pill container. It's linked on our Amazon storefront. So I'll have that link down below. Uh, but we use that and we have all of our supplements in there and we just keep that filled for travel and we don't use that on a day to day. So that's always in our luggage so that we can just grab it out and know everything is set to go. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's a lot of stuff that goes with with travel. I don't know how much you want to dig into each of the nuanced pieces. Are you wanting to give like walkthroughs of each or what do you think? Uh, I, I really just wanted to mention what the restrictions were with coming through TSA and that you can take all of those things. But again, it is going to depend on your goal on what is going to be necessary to bring. We traveled a lot. And even when I was in improvement season for competing, I still hit every metric. And so everything was brought with me when it came to supplements. Everything was brought with me when it came to food. And I was overly prepared for every single thing. Now, since then, our travel is still largely prepared because we know it makes us feel good. So it's not always about being perfect. It's again about how it makes us feel. And so we really look at how are we going to be best suited for this so that we are able to have the best experience while we're in a place. So let's go ahead and take, for example, our vacation that we took last January. Um, we decided to not bring food with us and to not pack to the extent that we have in the past because we were going to be present within vacation and just be eating at the hotel and enjoying um, everything that there was to offer. Um, and we found out that it would have been nice to maybe still have one or two meals with us. Now, not a ton of meals, but there were some times where we were like, we don't really want to leave to go get food, or we just want to have our normal food um, and just be able to go on to the next activity that we were doing. So that was helpful for us to know that, hey, even when we're going all in or when we've gone on like all exclusive, uh, all inclusive, not exclusive vacations, like we still bring snacks with us or we'll still bring supplements with us. So knowing kind of what your gauge is for each thing that you're doing, as well as what's a non-negotiable. So when we travel, our supplements are often a non-negotiable. Now that doesn't mean, okay, pre-workout and all the extra powders. We're talking about a lot of our pill supplements of we're always going to have our fish oil, we're always going to have our magnesium, our multivitamin, and different things that are going to help us when it comes to travel or that are in our normal routine. Like Alex is always going to have electrolytes with him. Those are going to be things that we always have. But then then everything surrounding it is going to depend on what the goal of the trip is or what we're expecting out of that. And I love that Alex brought up of you would go on these trips and then you would kind of be frustrated of the result that you got. And it came down to kind of like the effort versus the expectation. And so being able to know what do I expect out of this trip or what is the goal out of this trip so you can match your effort and your expectations there of understanding, oh, I'm okay to have some more flexibility on this trip. Maybe it's a plan that I I've put in place with my coach and it's programmed to have more flexibility. That means that I'm not off plan for not following the normal plan. This is the new plan. Or I know that there's more flexibility involved or I know there's less flexibility involved. So having those points before you go on the trip, I think is extremely helpful. And we normally sit down and kind of have a conversation of, okay, are we planning to eat out? What's the process? What are you wanting to do while we're there so that we're able to gear all of our travel packing towards that. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're planners through and through. And so I, I try to think of it in the context of what would someone who doesn't, who isn't, like they're more spontaneous than we are. We, mm -hmm. we are not in the general sense, spontaneous people. We like to know what's coming. We like to be prepared, all those kind of things. So the the, the spontaneous person is probably going to eat out most of the time. Mm -hmm. And so when we're looking at things from a structure standpoint, going back to the digestion focus, going back to being very well hydrated, um, prioritizing protein, and um, making sure that you're not just stuffing yourself full to the brim to where you have to unbutton your pants as you leave every restaurant that day. 
um, like go in, enjoy, um, make those meals about the people that you're with more than anything. Um, don't get too caught up in trying to track macros cause it's going to drive you insane. Uh, I just don't think that when you're on vacation or you're, you're visiting somewhere and you don't have things prepared, like that's just the, the route that you took. I think that you have to take a little bit of an L there of you're not going to be able to track. It's just not worth your time nor the stress that it brings into your life to try and figure all that out of like you're like you're not going to go to chain places all the time that are going to have the macros on their website mm -hmm. um, because that's not fun to do when you go to a new place. Like why would you go to a new area and just have Chipotle, Chick-fil-A and all the stuff that you can have at home? Mm -hmm. Like go somewhere that is is uh, maybe fun. exclusive to the yeah. area or what have you. Um, and so that's big. And then um, the other thing that I really try to drive home with um, my clients and, and our clients in general is that we're just working to be better than we were the last time we were in that same experience. And I think that oftentimes when individuals hire a coach, they're like, okay, this is what I did last time. And now since I have the coach, I have to be perfect. And it, they like beat themselves up so heavily because they weren't perfect in the scenario because now they have all the resources and they think that everything should just be easy, not necessarily easy, but should be able to be perfect from here on mm -hmm. out. And the reality is, is that you're getting the resources to just be better than you were the time before. And then you take the most current, now the current time, and you're just trying to per be better about that the next time that you're in the situation. And so seeing that place of, of progression is the thing to focus on, um, because I, I, I struggle with trying to express of uh, like a lot of the things that you just spoke on come from experience, mm -hmm. um, and, and being able to, Get, like give and take of like what's a priority what's what's going to be useful in this time frame what's uh should i bring supplements should i not bring supplements and we got that through experience more than anything um but kind of how to get there is giving yourself grace and not expecting perfection because on the road to getting to this point i expected so much perfection out of myself on the whole journey really until this point of like oh I just had to go through that to figure this out. Mm -hmm. It was just a matter of experience. It was a matter of going through it to understand it now. And the whole time I added this extra stress on myself of perfection that I expected from myself that was like, it wasn't possible. Mm -hmm. Like the the cards were were stacked against me and it wasn't like what I was striving for wasn't possible. And what ended up happening was probably the best case scenario. And I should have been more proud of myself because I did it that way or I accomplished it to be the best in that setting. And so um, giving yourself grace and, and working to that place is really important. Um, and and uh, the on the flip side of the grace, you, there's you're just constantly battling of like giving yourself grace and don't be a bitch. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm trying to find the middle ground for that all the time. And you're, you're having moments of like, potentially too much grace at times and then too much of being hard on yourself at times. And you're just trying to like teeter totter to find the balance. And everyone is going through this. Mm -hmm. Literally every person on the planet is going through it. And then some people are picking way too much grace. And then some people are picking way too much of being hard on themselves. And so you just have to understand that you're just teeter tottering all the time and um, understand that experience is going to lead you to the best place for you. Yeah, I love that you brought that up because it did take us figuring out what didn't work to find out what did work. And you don't know what you don't know. And some of the reason you might be beating yourself up is because maybe you did know some of these tips and you didn't implement them. And that might still feel crappy of, okay, I should have done X, Y, and Z, but that's in the past now. So you can't change it. But what you can change is what that looks like moving forward. So something I have a lot of my clients do after they go on trips and they say how the trip went, I say, all right, I need you to go ahead and journal about this and write down what are three things that you're really proud of yourself that you did right. What are three things that you would do differently or want to improve upon for next time? And then being able to see, all right, what do I need to write down to prepare for next time? Because it's very easy in the moment you get back from a trip and you're like, I should have done X, Y, and Z. And then the next trip comes and it slips your mind until it's prevalent in front of your face. And you're like, why didn't 
reason I do that. So what I've always done is looking at the trip and thinking, oh, it would have been easier if I packed it this way or if I brought this. And then the, I go ahead and write that down. So the next time I travel, I have it right in front of my face of what I need to do. But this also celebrates what you did do right. Because again, you're not going to be perfect. And so being able to see in front of your face, I did all of these things that I'm really proud of that maybe I didn't do the last time, but I did do this time or I stacked it for doing it a second time. And that's something to be proud of. And then being able to look at, would I change something or would I do something differently? Because now you're able to really build upon those habits. And that's how I got to this place, how we got to this place is building on each time of having a little bit of reflection, learning a little bit more, and then taking action for what needed to happen. So I have clients do this regularly and it's very helpful for them just because they're also able to see it in front of them of one client had said, I didn't do my best this trip. I just need to do better. Okay, what does better mean? And so if you don't have a metric to measure, then how are you going to improve by just saying you want to be better? So we went through, okay, what are actionable steps that you can do the next time for a trip like this to be in a better spot? Which also brings up different trips are gonna require different things of you, which I've kind of already mentioned that it does depend on what your goals are. I recently had a client, she went on a camping trip, then the next trip was a work trip, and then she went on a different camping trip. And I was like, we can't have the same expectation for all of these. They are going to acquire things differently from you. And you have to realize that when you are in a place where you have less available to you, there might be a different plan in place, or there might be things that are that you can't hold on to why I didn't get all of my meals perfectly when you didn't have access to a refrigerator and being able to get all of your macros in. And so being able to be kind to yourself, being able to give yourself grace, but being being able to figure out what that next step is to improve based on how the trip went and being able to set yourself up for success because lists have been so helpful for me of I've put together packing lists for when I'm going to a competition weekend when we're traveling. So I always have that to go back to. And it's not a guessing game of what needs to be in place or what I need to pack. It's all right there on the list of this is what you need and this is what you've known you've needed. And you're going to pack this and feel a lot better because of it. Yeah, I think the, the list and having things that are quantifiable is extremely important. Yeah. So some other things we do is that we do often get gallons of water when we are traveling, because if we are staying in a hotel or an Airbnb, likely not going to have access to water outside of the sink. And you can't always fit your water bottle under there. And who wants some tap and water? And Alex is very anti-tap water. So um, being able to get gallon waters when we're out shopping, being able to also bring a shaker bottle with you. Um, and that's going to be really helpful. So if you do bring protein powder, you can mix something up. If you need that as an extra water, bottle, you can have it, but it's going to be pretty versatile if you need it for pre-workout, intro, whatever. You have a shaker bottle and you're good to go, um, as well as having snacks and protein bars. So in my backpack, I actually have an assortment of protein bars varying of different fat content, different fiber content, or different preferences um, that are just in there for when we're on planes, when we're in cars, that we always have those packed and ready to go. Um, and we have a few other miscellaneous snacks we always bring in. So so circling back to travel um, or vacation, when we went on that last vacation, we still brought some protein bars and some protein powder and like some rice cakes. And it came in really handy because there were times where we weren't like, oh, I'm hungry for a full meal, but I wanted a snack. And I knew that I would likely not be able to get something that was dairy free for a protein bar easily accessible when I was out and traveling. So having that with me was very, very, very helpful. And it also made sure that we didn't get to moments that we were hangry or overly hungry before going to get food because we had something in our system. Right. Uh, what are other things that you feel like we do when we travel that really help you out? Uh, I feel like we've, we've listed everything for the most part. I don't think that in terms of food, um, I think that having things prepared and then having water is the, the biggest part. Um, and then being able to look at restaurants and places that I want to go that I'm excited for and, and, um, 
that we're going out to dinner or if we're you know visiting family in a position where uh, we have an understanding of when they're wanting to eat together uh, and those things I think is is a part of planning for sure. Yeah. And that also comes down to your hotel of looking at where it's located, of where it's going to be food nearby and what that is as a whole. Um, but it also is going to be big for your hotel of being able to call ahead and see if you are going to have a fridge or a microwave or requesting that because that will also kind of make or break what we pack due to what we know we're going to have access to. So that's always a great thing to be able to call ahead for and make sure that you're set to go there. Yeah. And, and even if the hotel does not have a uh, microwave in the room, they may be able to provide like a microwave on the floor or something along those lines to where uh, you'll still be able to heat up your meals. Yeah. And if you're very much in a place that you're in a bind when it comes to being able to pack your meals or make them before you go, you can use a meal prep company. And many meal prep companies are all good with shipping directly to hotels. You might need to call the hotel ahead of time and say, there's a package coming with my name on it. Can you hold it? If you don't know like your room number or you're ordering it before you get there. But that can be another great option of, okay, I just have that food ready and I'm all set to go and be able to enjoy the travel. So um, the last two things I'll mention is shipped. If you have a shipped membership, that comes in very handy. And the membership, I believe, is $99 per year. And you get um, free deliveries over $35. And it is incredible because shipped is all over, has so many different uh places that it goes to. And it's super friendly when it comes to travel. Um, and then also being able to talk to your family about groceries. So if you are traveling to go see family, if they're going to be going to the grocery store before you get there, being able to say, hey, can you grab a few things? Or saying, I'd love to go to the grocery when we get there. Um, being able to recommend some different things to do so that you are all set up um, in those instances. But largely going to come down to what your goals are and what's going to make you feel the absolute best. And that concludes today's episode. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate you all and have a beautiful day. Have a good one, guys.